What if you do how to find the best stocks to buy outright and to trade options in? Would that help you be a better stock and option trader? In this video, I'm going to talk through the thought process and the screening techniques I use each day to find potential stock and option trades. I'm going to use this using a list of companies that one of my patrons asked me about this past week. This is going to be a little bit longer video. I believe by the time this video is done, you'll have some good tips and tricks that you can use to find potential stock and option trades every day. First, I want to give a big shout out to Justin and Morton. They're two of my patrons that asked me questions that made this video happen for you. So thank you, gentlemen. As you see here, Justin was asking me how I go about ranking the stocks that I share with my patrons every single weekend. As many of you know, on a weekly basis, I share my top picks. These are companies I plan to trade in during the next week if I don't have a full position in them already and if they're not announcing earnings. But this list is the one that I go to to find new potential trades. But in addition to using this top five list to find potential trades, every trading day I go through all the companies I want to trade in that are not announcing earnings during the next expiration cycle looking for potential trades. And that's where Morton's question comes into play. He asked me about several companies that were not in my top five list this week. So I thought we could go through Morton's list here. I'm going to talk about what I like and don't like about each one of these companies from a technical aspect aspect right now. This will help you understand the thought process I go through every time I'm placing a new stock and option trade. Now I know a huge percentage of my viewers are men. We also have some awesome women that watch this channel as well. So I don't want to weird you out with this. I'll explain this picture in just a minute. Some of you might be familiar with this story you heard probably as a kid about Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You see, like Goldilocks, we're trying to find the stocks that are just right. We don't want stocks that have gone up too high. We also don't want stocks that are in a serious downtrend. We want to try and trade in the stocks that appear to be just right. Now in the stock market, nothing is ever just right because as you know, anything can happen. But we can greatly improve the odds of trades and positions going our way if we use the techniques I'm going to share with you in this video when you're picking your new stock and option and trades. You know how the story goes to Goldilocks and the Three Bears. First she tries their breakfast and the baby's breakfast is just right so she eats the whole thing. Then she tries Papa Bear, Mama Bear and the baby's chairs and of course the baby's chair is just right. Finally she decides to take a nap and again she tries the Papa Bear, the Mama Bear and the Baby Bear's beds. Again the Baby Bear's bed is just right. So how do we find these trades that are just right or as good as possible for us to have the highest percentage chance of winning in those trades? Let's get started. What I'm about to share with you is an accumulation of over 20 years of my trading mistakes and my trading wins. So I know it's a lot to share with you in one sitting. So if you need to, please go back and rewatch any portion of this video, but make sure that you understand each concept thoroughly. Now at the end of this video, I'm going to share with you where you can get some help doing what I'm about to share with you. It's basically a way to hit the easy button. So you'll have to spend all the time that we spend every day finding these potential stock and option trades. So the first ticker symbol we're going to consider is J and J. Here you see four time frames. The minute time frame, the top right is the hourly or 60 minute time frame. The bottom left is the daily and the bottom right is the weekly. Now we're going to focus on these two charts, the daily on the bottom left and the weekly on the bottom right for this video. I use the minute and 60 minute when I'm actually going to enter my trades. So the question is, should J and J be in my top five list? These are companies that I rank anywhere from six to 10 out of a possible scale of one to 10. However, it does include my top five list for the week. I generally start this list with stocks I will rate at least a six out of 10. You see the rating goes from one to 10. We want to trade in those that are rated as high as possible because they give us the best opportunity to be successful in a bullish or neutral trade. So in this list, you see that I share stocks that are rated at least a six or higher. So why did I not put J and J in my top five list? Well, there are several reasons for this. The first one is that as you can see here on this daily chart, although J&J has been in a nice uptrend, making higher lows and higher highs, it's trading at the very top of this trading channel. In order for J&J to be the area where I would like to take a bullish position in it or a neutral position, I like to see J&J at least come down to this area right in here that should serve as support for it. When I zoom in here, you see this area right here around 165 is where the red 200 and green 50 moving average are on this daily chart. It also coincides with an area right here at the end of June and also back in May that served as resistance for J&J. Remember that resistance, once broken through, tends to turn to support. So although we see nice volume down here, as the stock has been balled up, the stock just isn't at an area where I feel it's at a good enough support where it won't decline on us. Now J&J, it may continue going up and may go to the moon. I like to trade stocks that have had some sort of decline and are around some sort of support. You see, since they have experienced a recent decline, volatility tends to be a little bit higher. And if they're around support, then we have a pool of buyers who most likely will come in and buy the stock. Now, will it be enough to maintain that support? Well, maybe or maybe not. Generally, yes, but sometimes, no. Something happens and it breaks through that support. But by taking a neutral bull's position when a stock is around an area where a pool of buyers should come in to buy, well, it improves our odds of winning on that trade. 
Now here you see that Morton asked about the $165 strike price. And actually, if J&J were to come down, that's probably the strike price that I would pick. And the reason is that it's right around that level that should serve as support for it. If you want to be a little bit safer, you can always go a little bit lower to the $162.5 strike price, or even safer, you go to the $160 strike price. And the reason why that's safer is because as you can see here, I've drawn an upward sloping trend line between the last two waves lows. And if it were to come down, you see that J&J should find support right around this $159 or $160 area. So I do like Morton's strike price of $165. I just like to see J&J come down and successfully test around that $165 area for support. If or when it does that, if earnings aren't coming up, I definitely begin to take a bullish or neutral position in it by buying the stock or selling some cash secure put options. The next company is Starbucks, ticker SBUX. And here we see the four charts of Starbucks. Again, we're gonna focus on the daily and the weekly charts. Notice here in the bottom left chart, the daily chart, that Starbucks has recently broke out above the red 200 moving average and been trading right around the green 50 moving average. Now it looks like Starbucks is trying to settle on a new area of support right here around this $100 area. So Morton asked about the $100 strike price. And again, I agree with the strike price. I like the strike price. The reason why I didn't have it on this top five list is because in my mind, I'm questioning, is Starbucks gonna come back down and retest this area of support down here around 96. If it does that, then the $100 strike price will be in the money, which isn't a big deal if that area continues to serve as support because you can always roll it out and if you need to, roll it down to improve your position. Now, what I would be more interested in is possibly selling the cash secure put option around this $97.5 strike price. That gives Starbucks some room to come down in price get really close to this area that served as support for it multiple times in June and July, and this could still be a winning position for us. Now looking over here at this weekly chart, one thing you wanna be careful of is we see that overall, Starbucks is in a slight downtrend. Notice that the low from back here at the end of March, which is around $97.19 per share, is a little bit higher than the low from about a month and a half ago, which was at $95.55. That tells us that Starbucks is in a slight downtrend on this weekly chart. But like Morton, I agree this is one that we're looking at, and actually is a position I'm willing to trade in and watching very closely because the Starbucks can continue to find support around this green 50 moving average on the weekly chart and red to the moving average on the daily chart. I'm definitely game to sell a cash secure put option position in it. And it would definitely be in my top five list. Matter of fact, this is one of those that were on the fringe. I could have put it in there as a number six out of 10 ranking, but I chose not to this week. Now, the next one we're going to look at is GIS. And Morton was asking about the $72.5 cash secured strike price. Now, Morton asked me about this a couple of days ago. So it's easy to play Monday morning quarterback. But you see what's happened with GIS over the past few days is broken below an area of support. And that's the reason why I didn't have it in my top five list. It's a little bit easier to see over here on this weekly chart. So let's focus on this weekly chart. Notice that General Mills had gone up and made a nice higher high, which is a good sign, it's a bullish sign. But then it came back down and tested the same area that served as support for it back in February and appeared to be holding. However, what I didn't like is that there was really strong selling pressure. In fact, going back to the June 30th week, notice the volume was very high. In fact, one of the highest volumes from over the past year. And it was a very strong down candle. That made me hesitant to put this in my top five list. And that's why I didn't rank it a six or higher in this past weekend's top five picks. Now, as it nears this area here on the weekly chart around this 200 moving average, which is around 69 or so, if the selling pressure begins to decline, then I will look to sell a new cash secure put option in it because that's an area that should serve as support for it. Notice that going back here to early 2022, this is an area that served as a level of resistance which should turn to support for it. So General Mills is one I'm definitely watching for an opportunity to put it in our top five list once it kind of settles down a little bit. Now the next one is MDLZ, and he asked me about the $72.5 cash secured strike price. So here we have our two charts, our daily and weekly chart. What I don't like is I don't like how MDLZ has been making lower lows on this daily chart. However, it's also made a higher high, so we like to see that. What I like to really see is for MDLZ to come down and find nice support somewhere in this area here, or worst case, right in this area here around 71 or so. If it could do that and the volume stays good, then I'd be game to do a new trade in it. However, over the past few weeks, we saw although there was a very nice high volume buying day, that was a gap up, but what happened is the stock retraced and it did fill that gap, which is a positive sign because that gap has been filled. But over the past few weeks, we see sellers have kind of shown that they are stronger than buyers. So we're waiting to see if buyers can regain the strength and overpower the sellers. At that point, we take a neutral bulls position in MDLZ. Now looking over here at this weekly chart, it tells a little bit of a different picture. We see that on the longer time frame, it's in a bull trend. It's made higher lows, it's also made higher highs, and actually is in the lower portion of this upward sloping trading channel. And over the past few weeks, we see buyers have shown some strength 
The reason why I didn't rank this stock above a six is I just don't like that it's trading far away from this green 50 moving average. If MDLZ were to come back down and test this area around the, where the green 50 moving average is on the weekly chart, that area would coincide with this area of support going back into April, an area of resistance going back into December, also another area of resistance going back into May, and an area of resistance going back into January. Well, if it were to successfully test that area, which is right around 70, and it appeared that downward momentum was fading, I would definitely take a neutral bulls position in MDLZ. The next one is ARCC, and he asked about the $19 strike price. Although I would trade an ARCC, as you can see here, it is a pretty volatile stock. Notice that going back to the Great Recession, it dropped 76% they actually had to cut their dividend. So the two things I don't really like. I don't like a stock that tends to have huge drops in price when things go bad. We expect a drop in price, but prefer to see them anywhere from 20 to maybe at most around 50%. When you get these huge drops in price, they lose three quarters of a value during a recession like we had 2007 through nine. It makes me a little bit hesitant and I will enter a position in them. But I just want to be really careful. I also don't like that they had to cut their dividend. Again, I will trade the stocks that cut their dividend or that don't have a dividend, but I prefer to trade in ones that pay a nice dividend and I've shown a nice track record of increasing those dividends. Bearish Capital is one I would trade in. So let's look at the charts here. Again, we see that it's in a nice uptrend on this daily chart. What I like to see is it for it to come back down to around this $18.5 area and find support there. Notice that it is making higher highs and higher lows. However, it's in the upward portion of this upward sloping trading channel. So I like to see it come back down. And if it did that, then I would be game to do a bullish to neutral trade in Eris. Notice that same area over here on the weekly chart, that put it right here around this green 50 moving average. So Morton asked about the $19 strike price. Well, if it came down a little bit and was successfully testing this green 50 moving average, then it would be one I'd be willing to take a trade in. Next, we get to RGLD. And we're talking about the 110 strike price. As you can see, looking at this weekly chart, Royal Gold is very volatile. Notice that going back to April of 22, it experienced a 41% drop and then proceeded to go up 62%. Because Royal Gold is very volatile, I tend to try and pick my spots carefully. It's one I want to be careful with because it can really move around you. And when it moves, it can move in a really big way. Because of that, I like to trade in Royal Gold only when it's near lows, for example, 52 week lows. Now we do see it is finding support at this red to a moving average. So that's a good sign. Or if you look in the volume section on this weekly chart, we see that over the past several months, sellers have shown great strength. Because of that reason alone, I'm gonna leave Royal Gold alone for right now and wait until the selling pressure dissipates and buyers begin to emerge and show some strength. Next, we'll move on to Well, and we're talking about the $80 strike price. Now, looking at Well Tower here on a weekly chart, we see it is in a nice little tight upward sloping trading channel. However, it is trading more at the upper part of this trading channel. In order to do a trade in Well, here's what I like to see. Looking at our daily chart, I like to see it come back down and test this area right here around 79 to even as low as 77 for it to successfully find support in that area. That would allow it to continue its upward sloping trading channel, but it'd be at the lower part of this trading channel. Notice that buyers and sellers are fairly equal with buyers showing some advantage over the past few weeks. If we look here at the weekly chart, we see buyers have shown a lot of advantage over the past month and a half. Now before that, sellers showed some strength, but not enough to be concerned about because it was really just selling off when it was at the top part of this upper sloping trading channel. So overall, I do like Well Tower. If they're not about to announce earnings, I would do a trade in them if they were down here in the lower part of this upper sloping trading channel or closer to the $78.5 area. The next one is EIX, we're looking at the $67.5 cash secure put option strike price. So let's look over here at this weekly chart. When Morton sent this to me, this was the candlestick that we had just closed at. Now the reason why I didn't put this in my top five list is we just had a really big down week. Like EIX had almost dropped 5% that week. And it did it on pretty nice volume. It was right about the 50 moving average volume for the week. So I wanted to see if EIX would come down and retest this area down here around 65. If it did that, and the sellers weren't showing tremendous strength, then I definitely would have had this in my top five list. But for now, we're gonna wait and see if EIX will come down and retest this area for support. And if it gets there, we're going to put it on our list. And notice that this is seen a little bit better when looking at the daily chart. Notice how far away it is from this upward sloping trading channel. You have to come down around 7% to get there. We obviously don't want to sell a cash you can put option in a company, and then it drops 7% if we can help it. And so because of that, I like to see it come down and retest this area before I enter a new cash you can put option position in EIX. Now we get to MetLife. We're looking at the $60 strike price, ticker symbol MET. So here we see our charts of MetLife. MetLife has had a nice advance. Over the past several months, it's gone up over 26 percent. That's great. That means we're in a nice bullish trend. We see also over here on a weekly chart. Notice all the strong buying pressure 
over the past several months. It's broken through the red 20 moving average, now the green 50 moving average, and appears to be finding support just above that green 50 moving average. So overall, MetLife is in a very nice uptrend, and I like that. What I like to see is I just like to see it come back down and really successfully retest this area here where the red 20 moving average is, which if we switch over here to the weekly chart, so that's right where the green 50 moving average is. So it appears to be doing that on this time frame. But one thing about insurance companies, they can be very volatile. Going back to Simply Safe dividends, notice what happened in the Great Recession. They did maintain their dividend, but their sales dropped 19% and their overall loss was at 82%. So again, one of these stocks that really gets hammered hard in a bad bear market. Because of that, I'm very picky about when I enter new cash or put option positions in companies like MetLife and other insurance companies. And the same kind of applies to Cincinnati Financial, ticker symbol CINF. He asked about the 105 strike price. Now I do like that 105 area. If it were to come down and successfully find support, I do like it. Or what I don't like about it is that we have a gap right Right here that starts at 104 and 43 cents so it does appear that if it comes down and successfully tests this area they'll try and fill that gap Remember, gaps fill over 90% of the time. So there's a good possibility that it will fill that gap. Now, I have a problem trading with stock that might challenge my 105 cash care put option. That's not the problem. But again, it's one of these very volatile stocks that I want to be careful when I trade it. So what I'd like to see, in order for this to be on my top five list, I'd like to see Cincinnati Financial come down, retest this area, fill this gap, and find nice support. If it does that, notice that it'd be coinciding with this red 200 moving average on this weekly chart. But one thing to keep in mind here is a little bit of a negative is that Cincinnati Financial, it tends to find support below below that red to a moving average. Notice that over the past month and a half, it's been finding support about 5.5% below that moving average. So if Cincinnati Financial does come down, we expect it to not just test this red to a moving average, but also go below it before it finds support. Because of that, we're just gonna wait on CINF and let it come down before we put it on our top five list and look to do a trade in it. But overall, I like the company. If it finds support around that 105 area, I'd be willing to look to sell a cash to put option around 105 or more than likely the next strike price below that. The last one he mentioned was PRU, or Prudential Financial. And again, it's one of those financial insurance companies that I just gotta be careful with. Notice that in 2007 through nine, it cut its dividend. Its sales dropped 15%, which really isn't that bad. I'm okay with that. What I don't like is this recession return, negative 88%. So let's just say if you had $100,000 in this stock, it's only worth $12,000 at the worst of the recession. That's a big hit. So I don't like that. That's one of the reasons why it is on my watch list. And I will buy some outright when it's really beaten down, or maybe sell some cash or put options in it when it's really beaten down. But I really want be careful with something like this because it's kind of like you're holding a ticking time bomb. You don't want to be holding it when that fuse goes off because it can really blow up and hurt you bad as you can see here to the tune of 88%. But briefly looking at the chart, as you see on the daily and weekly chart, first the daily chart, I like to see Prudential come down and test this area around $92 and successfully test it. Over the past few weeks, we've seen that sellers have shown some strength, not tremendous strength and not enough to scare me off, but not enough to trade it when it's trading up here in the upward part of this wave. Looking over here at this weekly chart, we see over the past few months, buyers have shown some strength, but notice that volume is well below the 50 moving average. This white line here is the 50 moving average. So although buyers have been in control, they haven't been exceptionally excited. However, because sellers have kind of been non-existent, it's pushed the stock price up 23% over the past several months. So I do like that, but Prudential is just one I wanna be careful with because it can really go against you in a big way as you saw earlier. If you're finding this information helpful and would like to become a better stock and option trader, I encourage you to check out my option trading course entitled The Proven Option Trading System for Monthly Cash Flow. As you see here in that course, there's over four and a half hours of condensed instruction on how to be a more successful option trader. There's three and a half hours of live trading sessions that I condensed down into a 39 minute video. You'll learn a lot in that video. And there's over 16 videos I made just for this course that will never be released to the public. So if you'd like to learn the trading system I use in over 95% of my trades, I encourage you to check this online course out. Unlike with Goldilocks and the Three Bears, with stock and option trading, things very seldom are just right. However, by knowing what to look for, when you're looking for new potential stock and option trades like I share with you in this video, it will help you to greatly improve your returns and put cash into your pocket every single month. If you like helping find trades that are just right or as close to just right as they can be, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. I take a lot of the hard work and time out of finding potential trades. I share with you exactly what I'm trading. You can then look at it for yourself. If you like what you see, you can consider taking a trade that's similar to it. If you'd like to see how to use the optional strategy to retire sooner than you thought possible, check out the video at the link above in the description below entitled, Does the Will Option Strategy Work? Retirement Planning. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.